from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds who've already begun the process of learning English as their second language. It's a program for people of all ages. If you're seeking greater English proficiency, this program is designed to help you reach that goal. Ramping Up Your English is a support program for English learners who have already passed the beginning stages of learning English. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher English proficiency. We use English to teach English. The theme of our first unit is trains and railroads. This is episode nine, segment one. We've been traveling eastbound on Amtrak Sunset Limited. Today we'll continue seeing the last three parts of that journey to New Orleans. In episode eight, we left viewers in the deserts of New Mexico. Now we continue further east. Here's part three of that journey. There's a lot to see from the train in New Mexico. We're headed east on the Sunset Limited, crossing the great desert land in America's southwest. From Tucson, Arizona, the Sunset Limited spends a good part of the day traveling to El Paso, Texas, often passing freight trains. These tracks are owned by the Union Pacific Railroad. Amtrak has to lease the tracks. Near the Texas state line, northwest of El Paso, the tracks enter this sprawling rail yard constructed by the Union Pacific Railroad. In a distant part of this yard, we see freight containers and the equipment that lifts them off the rail cars. Our train crept into these brand new service islands where locomotives take on fuel and other necessities. I suspect that the railroad has invested over a billion dollars in this huge desert located installation. On the opposite side of our train, we saw a treat. Waiting on a parallel track was the westbound Sunset Limited. I say it was a treat because it's always exciting to encounter the sister train, and it's usually going by so fast that it's just a blur. But not this time. In the westbound train, we see the same consist as our own train going eastbound. Of course, there's the two locomotives. Here's the baggage car. And behind the baggage car, we have the sleeping cars. On this train, there are two of them. Here's the first one, and then here's the second one. After those cars, the sleeping cars, we have the dining car, which from the outside looks identical. And then we have the viewing car, which is also the lounge car. Behind that, we find the coaches. Now it's time for our train to pull out. We're not far from El Paso, but first we have to clear this gigantic complex of trains, freight containers, and trucks. There's a border crossing over there. What's that? Border crossing over there. I oh. Don't... Oh, right is here. That what it is. The Sunset Limited runs right along the border with Mexico. A 
allowing passengers a quick glimpse of our neighbors to the south. This is the border right here. To Mexico? Yep, that's Mexico right over there. Dad? Dad? <laughs> Hola, amigos. That's Mexico. Soon there was no more town, only the sprawling desert and the border patrol. Oh uh, yeah, El Paso. Soon we were on a high trestle, entering El Paso, the most westerly city in Texas. So that is the Rio Grande River right there. That's all there is to it. Here we saw a fence between us and our neighbors. That would be the fence. Yep, that and would there's a border gourd right over there. It's a train station. El Paso. This is the El Paso train station right here. This distinctive structure was designed by the same architect as the Union Station in Washington, D.C. Here's a freight train carrying cargo containers from the West Coast ports, still headed east. El Paso is a good opportunity to get off the train for a while and walk around on something that's not moving. It's also a chance to get a good look at the train you're on. That's how I discovered that the Sunset Limited was pulling these private historic cars on the end of the train. We were pulling four of them. We were in Texas now, only about 900 miles to the Louisiana border, picking up some new passengers to take east. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Our goal is to help you elevate your level of English proficiency in a way that causes the least amount of stress. Our approach is to make English learning interesting and fun by doing a thematic type approach. And our first theme is trains and railroads. When the Sunset Limited rolls through Southern Arizona and New Mexico, it rolls through a part of the United States known as the Gadsden Purchase. This strip of land was bought from Mexico for $10 million in order to make way for a railroad linking the south with the west coast. The purchase took place after the Treaty of Guadalupe ended the Mexican-American War and well before the Southern Pacific Railroad built the second transcontinental railroad in 1881. In Mexico, the purchase is known as the Venta de Mesilla. Once Southern Pacific Railroad reached El Paso, it traveled on pre-existing railroads to New Orleans. We'll travel on that section when we return. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. Are you looking for outstanding photography and a way to strengthen your English vocabulary? You'll have both in Seymour Simon's Book of Trains from HarperCollins Publishers. Each time you turn a page in this book, you're treated to world-class photography. One page features a train switching yard in Portland, Oregon. Most pages have written information about the picture you're enjoying and about trains in general. You'll encounter the precise vocabulary of train terminology. You'll also encounter language forms like present tense verbs and prepositional phrases. You'll see how objects are used to describe things by listing their parts. Mostly though, you'll enjoy learning more about trains and about the various cars on the train. You're also likely to find the reading level understandable. 
Seymour Simon's Book of Trains is a beautiful book that offers an enjoyable way to learn more about trains. You'll have to get your own copy. I'm too attached to mine. For Ramping Up Your English, I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English learners who want to improve their English proficiency. If that's you, you're in the right place. This is segment two of episode nine. I've noticed that conductors have always had watches and they're concerned about the train being on time. The railroad seemed obsessed with reducing the time it took to get passengers from one station to another, especially the long distance trains serving large cities. I'm a bit obsessed as well. I hope there's time to show all video clips of the Sunset Limited traveling east. I'll use my conductor voice to call all aboard to part four of our journey on Amtrak's Sunset Limited. Rumbling through America Southwest, Amtrak's Sunset Limited travels eastbound, the direction in which our second transcontinental railroad was built. We started in Los Angeles on this adventure on a passenger train that would head east until reaching New Orleans, Louisiana. In parts one, two, and three, we shared our journey from Los Angeles to El Paso, Texas. Now we travel on to San Antonio, Texas. This is big desert country, the Wild West's open spaces. We passed miles of track improvement work. With so much freight crossing the country these days, railroad companies are investing heavily in infrastructure. We saw all kinds of interesting equipment, replacing ties, straightening rails, and replacing ballast, even hauling off the old ties. Since Amtrak runs on these rails, we ought to get a smoother ride in the future. For much of this route, we ran parallel to Interstate 10, but it was rarely within sight. Here we saw the border crossing from Arizona to New Mexico. Landscape remained the same no matter which state you were in. Even the little towns looked alike. I'm always intrigued by the towns left behind when traffic shifted to the interstate from the old two-lane highways. Now the Sunset Limited pulls east out of El Paso through a Union Pacific train yard and past this petroleum processing plant. Oil and Texas have long lived together and there's still nothing quite like a West Texas sunset. Well, it is the Sunset Limited. West Texas towns like Alpine are on the small side, but very important to the railroad. Alpine is where the crew of the Sunset Limited rotates. We get new conductors and engineers. This is West Texas. Lots of it. Sanderson, Texas. The sameness of the West Texas landscape is broken by this awesome sight, the Pecos River. 
Sunset Limited crosses on the highest railroad bridge in North America. Further east, another bridge takes us across Lake Amistad, a lake shared in friendship between the United States and Mexico near Del Rio, Texas. We parallel Highway 90, also known as the Old Spanish Trail. We're late arriving in San Antonio. It's usually dark when we meet a train called the Texas Eagle here. The Sunset Limited drops a sleeper and a coach here for their trip to Chicago. Two cars shorter, the Sunset Limited continues eastbound toward New Orleans. There's still a lot of Texas down the tracks. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. You can watch this program and others by going to our website, letscreate.org. You can watch and even download this program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. I'm going to check my watch for a moment here, if you don't mind. Well, it looks like we're right on schedule. This ends segment two. We'll be right back with segment three right after this. This is a Ramping Up Your English book review. If you've taken an interest in the theme of trains and railroads, you can grow that interest with Trains Magazine. This is for the serious rail fan or just anyone who loves trains. Each issue has a main theme, this one about western steam engines clearing the tracks of snow and ice. Since the featured events were for our photographers, there are incredible pictures in this special winter and holiday issue. This issue also features Union Station in Kansas City, a beautifully remodeled historic train station served by Amtrak's Southwest Chief during its nighttime run between Chicago and Los Angeles. Trains Magazine is also a good source of finding railroad museums closest to your home. If you want to know more, visit their website. I found my copy at a newsstand and I just couldn't resist buying it. This has been a Ramping Up Your English book review. I'm John Letts. Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. You can watch and download this program by visiting archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Choose Ramping Up Your English from the sidebar or choose my name, John Letts. You can see this program on Channel 15 in Ashland and Channel 182 on Charter Cable. This is Episode 9, Segment 3. I'm going to look at my watch again. Well, it looks like this program is running on time, so we must be on the right track. The first segment showed all the cars of the Sunset Limited, the westbound train pulling out of that huge tr uh, train yard, You'll find a list of these cars on my website, letscreate.org, if you want to practice describing a train by listing its parts. For now, let's climb back aboard the eastbound Sunset Limited for the final part of its journey to New Orleans. Amtrak Sunset Limited rolls east from Los Angeles to New Orleans. Part 4 brought us to San Antonio, Texas, Fueling up in San Antonio, we had a bird's eye view of scrap metal awaiting recycling. Here it waits in a gondola. From there, we rolled into Houston, seeing that city's skyline well before arriving at the station. Houston is the fourth largest city in the United States. Shipping, petroleum, medical services, and now financial services 
keep Houston prosperous. When my ancestors arrived here in the early 1900s, they could never have imagined these skyscrapers. Many of my relatives live in Houston. My great aunt took my family to see some of this great architecture built. These towers of steel and glass were built with oil money and made habitable by air conditioning. Downtown Houston is an impressive cityscape, but there's nothing impressive about Houston's tiny, artless train station. It's as if the city is ashamed of this great train. Now we're moving away from the train station. Between Houston and Beaumont, we cross the Lost River. I guess the river is lost somewhere down there under all that water. Next stop, Beaumont, Texas. It's near Beaumont where the infamous Spindletop oil field was discovered. Petroleum continues to be important to Beaumont in the form of petrochemical plants, and a lot of that gets shipped from this port. After the small town of Orange, Texas, we cross the Sabine River into Louisiana. There's no shortage of wetlands here. This was once a no man's land wedged between Louisiana and Texas. Today it's definitely part of Louisiana and it's very, well, it's very wet. This is stubble left over from the previous year's rice crop. It leads right up to this towering rice dryer. Rice field with just a couple of um, oak, big old oak trees in the middle. Someone used to live out there, no doubt. Seeing rice fields made me feel at home. I was fortunate to work on my uncle's rice farm when I was a teenager. Out in the field on a tractor, I would wave at Southern Pacific Sunset Limited, never dreaming that someday I would get to ride this train. A lot of cypress. Mermintar River. This is Mermintal. So that's a rice field. That's a big rice field. Esterwood. Rice mill. We should be going right along Mill Street. The rice mills to the south of the track told me that we were in Crowley, the rice capital of the world, and my hometown. So there's the train cars that take the rice away. Parkerson, your dad should be getting a view right of downtown Crowley. Uh, let me get this first. Daddy. 
Daddy? Crowley. This is Lafayette, the closest station to Crowley. The Sunset Limited continued eastward through New Iberia and on to New Orleans, but we got off here. Oh, welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. Checking my stopwatch, I see that we're running on time, and we have time to do a couple of FAQs. Question. If someone already speaks English, is there any value in watching Ramping Up Your English? Well, actually, there is value in it in several ways. Many native English speakers can improve their language skills using methods we use here. As with people from other language backgrounds, there's a tendency to stop growing in a language once it meets your needs. Working with this program can elevate your native language skills by focusing on forms and functions of English you might seldom use but desire to use now. It's also fun to watch train videos. Question, I see ads when I watch your video clips by following the links on your website. What's up with that? Well, those ads don't earn me any money. The music I use is licensed for nonprofit use, such as public access TV. My links take you to YouTube, which is for profit, and so the ads pay the creators of the music so they earn their share through those ads. Remember, you can just click on the X and make those pesky ads go away. Well, it's time to get this train on track. I want to thank my crew for lending their time and talent to make this program possible. I also want to thank the staff of RVTV for their support and encouragement. And I also want to thank you for watching. See you next time on Ramping Up Your English. I'm John Letts. You've been watching Ramping Up Your English, a support program for intermediate level English language learners. Learn more. Visit our website at letscreate.org. You can also watch or download today's program at archive.org slash details slash rogue TV. Join us next time on RVTV Voices for Ramping Up Your English.